Today we're taking a look at the 2018 Heisen R6 Roku TV. This is their new high-end Roku TV with all the bells and whistles on it that they're currently selling. Now, this is basically a Roku built into a TV if you're not familiar with it. It does include some additional features that I'll cover in a little bit. But let's first talk about the standard TV. The TV comes with three HDMI ports, optical audio out, USB, which you can also use to um, pause live TV by using it as a storage device, and the AV cables out for RCA red, yellow, white cables to connect like an old v VHS player, for example. Uh, past that, very standard Roku TV. If you've ever used a Roku when you launch this, you're right at home. Many people ask me, how do you access your inputs? So it's got all these inputs, but how do I get to them from Roku? Well, Roku puts them right here in the home screen, just like Netflix or Amazon would on the home screen. You can see I got HDMI 1 here and more. These can be renamed, so this is HDMI 2. I can go in here and say rename input and pick one from, of a very long series of suggestions here. I can even custom name one. So if I wanted to name this a specific name, I could do that here. Or I could just say, hey, call this HDMI 2. Um, same thing with the antenna right here is the um, antenna input here. I can name it to be table, uh, if this was connected to cable, uh, or antenna, tuner, live TV, broadcast TV, whatever I want to call this, I can change the name there. Uh, to some of the settings here, I can control some of the pictures and other things, but to get into most of the settings for things like how bright the picture is, what kind is it set for movies, TV, and, and so forth, you actually need to launch a stream. Once you do that, let me pause that, hit the star key, and here you'll find the full set of um, controls. So I can mess with TV brightness, picture mode, these are pre-created um, settings for your TV, so I can say vivid, low power, movie, normal, or sports. I use sports, I watch a lot of sports on TV. I find when I'm gaming through my PlayStation or Xbox, sports and the preset is the best I find. You can also adjust the picture size, so if you put a um, SD quality image on here, you can do things like stretch it and zoom it in to kind of fill the whole TV you want. Leave it on direct or auto for the Roku TV to do the best there. Um, I can also have a sleep timer, which is pretty cool. Not only um, is this a cool feature, but it's also beneficial to anybody with a data cap that Roku TVs do. With this, it goes up to three hours, and at that end of that time, it shuts off the TV. It does give you a warning, let you say, hey, you got 60 seconds, you want to override the sleep timer, you can do that. The thing I like about it, if you have a, a data cap, is it will auto um, stop whatever streaming. So instead of burning gigabytes of data every night as you sleep and your Roku keeps going, this will uh, allow it to just be canceled and stop it removing any wasted data cap usage. Uh, you also have the ability for closed captions here, on mute, off, always on, or on um, mute, it's probably one of my favorites. So if you use the little 30 second recall on replay, it will show the closed caption. If you were like, hey, what did they say? You can click there. I like it so when I mute the TV, I mute the closed captions pop up and I can read what's being said as it's muted. Um, so those are kind of the basic settings. There are advanced ones here. If you said, hey, that's great that they have preset modes I could pick from, but I really want to adjust everything the way I like it. You can come in here and do things like control the, the contrast, backlight, sharpness, color, tint, color temperature, all kinds of stuff and mess with that. Of course, anytime you can go in here and reset the settings back to the original defaults. So there's a lot of different features here. I'll just show you what it's currently set up for with the um, sports setting by default here. Uh, let's go back to the home screen. Um, it does offer the ability with the antenna here to stream your locals. So you connect an antenna directly into your TV and it will work just like you would expect. Just scroll up and down for the uh, different channels. You can even get a brief channel guide up on the TV, which is cool. And it will show you what's coming up for the next uh, few days through a traditional looking channel guide. It does not record, but it does allow you the ability to pause live TV for up to 90 minutes and rewind it if you plug in a USB storage device. The TV does not have built-in storage, but through a USB storage device that you can pick up real cheap at Best Buy, Walmart, you probably have one laying around your house, you will be able to do things like pause live TV. You plug it in, when you launch it, it says, would you like to use this to pause live TV? You hit yes, and you're all set. 
Uh, past that, there's really not a lot to say about the, the TV itself. It's 4K HDR, it's a nice picture, does a nice job. Uh, I have two big complaints about it though. For a high-end Roku TV, it does not include a voice remote. It's a line of sight TV, you need to have the remote be able to have a line of sight for the TV. It does, instead of a voice remote though, it does have the ability for you to set the sleep timer from the remote instead of going into the settings, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I would kind of wish it had the point anywhere remote with the private listening built in. The remote does not have the little headphone jack because it's not a wireless remote. You can still use your phone, connect it through the Roku app to stream over Bluetooth or stream through whatever connector your phone has for a headphone jack on it. Um, that's a miss there, I think. It does come with Netflix, Hulu, Sling, and DirecTV Now as the quick um, buttons on the remote. And it's a standard Roku remote. The other complaint is really nitpicky, and a lot of TV manufacturers do this, and it annoys me. On the left side of the TV when you're facing it is all the um, HDMI ports, the RCA port, the optical audio, all that's on the left. The power cord is the only plug on the right-hand side of the TV. Why is that annoying? Is, well, I like to try to you know, carefully tie up the cables and run them down so it looks nice when sitting on a table and you're not seeing a bunch of cables dangle down below the TV. It's kind of annoying that there's a bunch of cables on the left side and then just one cable on the right. Nitpicky, maybe. Heisen is not the only TV manufacturer that does this. Seems like pretty much all of them do this. I just kind of wish the power cable port was on the same side or at least closer to the side with all the HDMI, antenna, optical audio, etc. Personal request, but that's there. Um, you do get this custom Heisen background. You can go into the settings and mess with the theme on the TV right here. Of course, you can go in here and set up the traditional one. Um, if you would rather have the traditional looking Roku purple, then you can go in the channel store and download other themes if you would so choose that to be what you want. Uh, but you do get that Heisen logo on the top left hand corner. It just comes with the TV. Uh, past that, everything is exactly what you expect. The feature free section, which will show you free content from around um, all the different channels Roku has. So I can see here, NBC, Crackle, Tubi, uh, the Roku channel and more are all right here. Um, let's go. Oh, let's go back to the home screen. Um, it does have the My Feed where I can set it up to let me know when new shows and movies pop up that I was waiting for. The uh, Fandango Store, the search option here, the Channel Store, which will allow me to go in here and add a ton of other channels from the official Roku Channel Store, all built in right here. Um, pass that. It's a Roku. If you've used a Roku before, you're going to be happy. Um, for the price point, I think this is an excellent TV, 4K HDR, and an aggressive price. I will link to this TV down in the show notes down below if you want to check all of that. Um, why am I not saying the price? Well, because the price is always changing. And by the time you watch this video, whatever price I got this TV at, thanks Roku for sending us a review unit, by the way, uh, would probably be different. So I'll just link to it if you want to check out the pricing right now, see where you can buy this in the show notes. If you have a question, let me know. Um, I do like Roku TVs. I think this is kind of the future for Roku. The ability for them to have the Roku built into the TV does allow them to do other cool things like have the ability to have your antenna built in, the HDMI ports, the ability to have a sleep timer, other features, all nicely and smoothly built into your TV. Uh, I find this so easy to use. I highly recommend that. I know some people don't like it. They think consider it very bland looking. And that's kind of one of those personal opinion things. You're either going to like the super simple, easy to use interface, or you're going to be like, eh, that's just not doing it for me. I want something more graphically pleasing. That's a personal choice. Some people like it, some people won't. But as far as functionality, very quick, very easy to use, very responsive, had no crashing, no hiccups, no issues during our testing. The setup was super simple. When I plugged it in, asked a few questions, signed in my Roku account, bam, I'm all set, and I'm streaming Netflix a few minutes later. So, two thumbs up, simple to use, good price point, good picture quality, especially at the price point, you're paying for this. If you have a question, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. 
But don't forget to hit that subscribe button every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here. We're doing weekly core kind Q and A's. As we do our best to help you get the most out of your core kind experience by giving you more reviews, how to's, Q and A's, and weekly core cutting tips, plus our weekly core cutting recap show where we cover some of the biggest news in the world of core cutting from the past week. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us. And hopefully we've helped you make a purchasing decision.